People in the U.S. move around a lot, and I've moved around a lot. Um, people who are professors tend to do that. And so I hadn't given a lot of thought to, you know, what is home? I have a house, I have a wife there, and, you know, that's our home on one level. But when um, things were changing so dramatically politically in the U.S., we started thinking, what if the worst happened? What if this wave of ugliness and, and, um, and hatred that seemed to be going on across the country, what if it... What if it built into something that looked more like, you know, what we saw in the 30s and 40s in Germany? And my wife said, well, maybe we should think about moving. Maybe we should move to Canada because we live close to Canada. It's a great country. And, uh, and as we thought about it, as we, as we talked about it, the more I thought about it, the more adamant I was that, no, I'm not going to move. This is my home. And, um, and you know, maybe that is my definition of home. It's sort of the place that I feel like they can't kick me out of, that I have, I'm entitled to stay, I'm, I want to stay, I want to fight to make it the, the country that it can be and should be. To suddenly be, to go from having, you know, a president who was very supportive and did his best to facilitate making our rights real. Um, we now have, um, you know, a, a Congress and a president who don't seem to care very much about them and have already taken some steps to take some of the things away. So, uh, so I think that feeling is real. I think at the same time, it's, it's uh, just universally, I would say, among people that I know, activists of many different kinds have been invigorated rather than intimidated. And to me, that gives me hope that we'll be able to, um, you know, to weather whatever happens, if it means holding on to our rights or trying to, you know, push harder to extend them. One way or another, it will happen. Well, it's had a big impact on me um, to think about what are the, you know, what are the lives of LGBT people like? Uh, what do we know about them? What don't we know? When I hear a story, I mean, this is probably an occupational hazard of being an economist. When I hear a story, I think, you know, that's very powerful and, you know, reveals a bit of life and it's also data. It's also a chance for other people to better understand what LGBT people face. If I learn from it, then I think other people could too. But maybe then we'd want to also know more widely how, how common is that experience? How many other people experience it? Where do they experience it more than in other places? So, I, so it always makes me ask more questions. Um,